you are okay. I can prop. I can be here. Okay, let's let's do let's do a prop. It's good because the light the light's good here anyway. Okay. comics when I was a uh, god like really young probably age five like scribbling and drawing my own stories at the time I didn't really realize they were comics I thought they were more like rubbish animation I did comics consciously for the first time um, when I was in my 20s um, and I, I read Ghost World and fell absolutely in love with the medium and thought oh, I need to make these now <laughs> As soon as I finished reading, started exploring like um, you know the dark corners of uh, comic shops and started going to conventions and just the more and more that I read about the medium, the more I fell in love with it and it, yeah, <laughs> that was the end of me. <laughs> so this is my book, um, The House That Grew which was published by Random House with Square Peg in uh, last year, and um, yeah, it's a it's a a book all about a decaying Victorian house which um, is kind of electricity filling and the um, cracks are forming in the building and um, the residents who are living in this house, the tenants, all kind of um, drawn together through the, the decaying of the house. Um, it's all a metaphor for bodies and kind of our bodies, a lot of mortality and weight things um, and the, the residents kind of represent these themes through their kind of weird, freakish um, characters. Um, so one of the characters is, is uh, this grandmother, Demi Durbach, who kind of grew up in the Scottish Highlands and surrounded by the hills and the heather. And now she's stuck up in this, in, in the top flat of this tenancy and she's kind of taken to merging into her environment. And it's great fun because you can play around with, um, once you've met the character and understood her, you can read the, the book forward and backwards and kind of find out where she's hiding. Um, another, uh, the character is this, this woman, um, Marion, who, who's the matriarch of this, the Midnight Feast Front, who are a group of women who are uh, kind of very bacchanalian in, in the way that they feast on food and each other, and they have these, um, these huge midnight feasts at the very top of the flat um, and gorge themselves and everything as a kind of form of social protest. And they torment this poor little woman up here, Janet, who lives downstairs and is a dietitian, by phoning her at night and whispering all these tasty recipes down the phone at her. She's kind of like a grotesque version of Nigella Lawson and she's supposed to be a bit like the dietitian Gillian McKees. <laughs> Although don't say that, I might get sued. <laughs> okay, so um, I also make kind of experimental comics, like um, comics in dolls houses and jewellery boxes um, and, and digital comics as well. So I really love kind of exploring the terms of what is a comic and how can you push that and kind of challenge the different expectations. So um, this was one of the, the first um, comic sculptures I made. Um, it's called Death to Us Part and it is literally just a wee jewellery box which I found in the charity shop and I took the little drawers out and stuck them on top here and um, kind of thought about what kind of um, story could be told in this, in this format, in this shape. Um, and so I decided it had a little mirror in the back in a heart shape, like a kind of little kitsch mirror. And down here I had a, another wee draw and I kind of thought, oh, it's got to be about love and death. And so I told the story about this little man and woman who grew up as babies, fall in love, grow old together. But eventually he dies, so she has to dig him up and um, turn him into a hat stand. <laughs> it's about it's a bit of a tongue-in-cheek story <laughs> about the inevitability of loss. Plus I always threaten my boyfriend to dig him up one day and turn him into a hat stand when he dies. <laughs> Um, so this this is um, one of the comic sculptures which I made, which was the biggest one I've attempted so far. Um, it's a doll's house, obviously, it's my childhood doll's house, and you might recognise it from the front cover of The House That Groaned. So the story in this doll's house is called Behind the Mirror. Well, it's based on the Bloody Mary ghost myth. You know, if you go to the mirror at midnight and you hold a candle and you say, Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. And then the mythology goes that Bloody Mary comes through the mirror and gouges out your eyes. Um, and so I really love that idea of kind of femininity and an angry woman um, and thought it would be a perfect kind of story to build in the doll's house. So on this side of the doll's house there's this little girl who's this perfect kind of doll's house woman. Uh, 
and the girl really and she looks at herself in the mirror and we watch her through the window so it's quite a lot of voyeurism um and then behind the mirror you kind of see this ethereal kind of aggressive woman who's watching her from the other side and she lives on this side of the house and she kind of draws images of her the whole idea about femininity and voyeurism and feeling looked at and watching other people um, and eventually it doesn't end nicely much like the myth and she smashes through the window pulls out her eyes <laughs> so yeah it's really good fun to me I've been lucky enough to be involved with loads of um, international projects um, to be mostly sponsored by the British Council who've sort of really acknowledged that comics are this emerging form of uh, literature which they need to promote and they've been sending lots of really lucky comic artists from the UK around the world. Yay! <laughs> so um, yeah, um, part of that I also went with Hay Festival last year to Lebanon which was really exciting and somewhere I would never have had the opportunity to go. So it's just such an exciting way to see that how comics are taking off on a global scale. So um, the last the last uh, project that I've been working on was these kind of um, collage comic, which was for the Passaporto Brussels in Shorts project, um, which we, we got to go on a residency um, and create this kind of book, which was a collection of uh, different artist stories from all over Europe. Um, yeah, so that that was my one. It was all about a five euro note, and I made it through kind of cutting out these. Um, collages and basically colouring it on Photoshop um, and yeah it's about the story is about this magical five euro note which floats down into this market and is picked up by different people who, who have different professions like the builder, the florist, the pharmacist and they all, um, it, it grants them their deepest darkest wish, it's kind of supposed to be magical um, but then by the end you kind of realise that it, it's, it's not um, it's not actually magical and it's merely just kind of reflecting our relationship with little things which we buy every day to kind of keep life bearable. My favourite comics growing up weren't kind of, I guess they were picture books more, but I absolutely loved um, Masquerade by Kit Williams, which was the most exciting book ever. It was drawn in the 70s and it's kind of just a picture book really, but um, it's also a treasure map whereby uh, Kit Williams, he hid this little jewel, which you can see on the back here, um, somewhere in the UK, and and created this picture book as a kind of a map. And I was really excited by the fact that this book was so much more than just a story. It kind of bled out of the paper pages into the real world. And Maurice Sendak, obviously, who, who died last year, I think, he's um, a huge inspiration and really, really loved his stuff and grew up reading that a lot. So, yeah. I love him. <laughs> um, and in terms of newest books, Linda Barry's book, which I picked up at um, Angoulême, is fantastic. And I'm really, I've just started a kind of Linda Barry love affair. She's amazing. And this book is all about people's um, kind of exploring creativity and how we kind of unlearn to be creative as we grow older and the pressures we put on each other and ourselves to kind of um, create not as play but more as work as professional so um, she's got these amazing collage images and stories and she does it with so much genuine heart and passion I really admire her it just I, I think she's fantastic she's really good and then finally is this book which I guess isn't a traditional comic um, it looks in fact like a, a catalogue which you get at an auction house um, really boring kind of grey photograph and in fact what it is is a love story um, between a man and a woman, um, these guys at the beginning, told through objects and kind of the story of how their relationship unfolds so it's kind of looking back like you're looking over evidence from a murder mystery or something when you read the book. Um, yeah so I absolutely love it, it's really good and it's Leanne Shapton who's the, who's the author and I guess it's a way which you can look at sequential storytelling, um, not in the kind of traditional panel format that we would think. This is my a sneak peek for the first time, exclusive. <laughs> of my new book, which is um, Death of the Artist, um, which will be finished next year, 
2014. Um, so at the moment I'm working on that and I, I can't say much about it because it, it, it's going to be a bit of a, a kind of um, secret until then. But ultimately it's going to be kind of playing with the graphic novel form in a way which I don't think has ever been done before. Um, so I'm really excited for that. And also it's going to probably be the most challenging project I've ever taken on ever. <laughs> so I'm kind of terrified about it as well. So if you see me walking around in a daze looking really nervous and stressed then it will be because of this. <laughs> um, so yeah we've just kind of been sorting out deals and stuff I don't know how much I can say about that now but it will be out and it will be in um, finished in 2014. <laughs> <laughs>